because we want it to look like this. Welcome back to Karen Creek, guys. I'm Jeremy here in Southern Ohio. We're down at the horse barn. We've got to build a suspension type deck off these French doors. So in true Cairn Creek fashion, we're getting out to Woodbizer Sawmill. We've got them poles. We've got some leftover cedar utility poles we're gonna cut up to make this beautiful suspension deck. Let's go. By the way, I've never built a suspension deck. Have you? So tell me in the comments what you guys have been up to. How's winter treating you? Pretty good here at the farm. Pretty good. And look here. We got those poles in a couple nights ago so they can start kind of thawing out. Now, by no means do they have moisture like a typical log because I've got a load of poplar out there. We're also gonna get cutting soon. But yeah, these cedar poles, we've just got three, but I think for what we're doing, it's not a huge project. I think these three are gonna do it. I've done some quick math and I hope, I hope it works out. Hi, Mr. Woodmiser. Mm. It's been several months since we fired this up. We're probably gonna have to jump the, jump the daggone thing. And I know what you're thinking, you're thinking that the mill shop's too nice. Well, it actually is. We've outgrown this thing. It's time for Cannon Creek Mill Shop to get rebuilt a new location with, I mean, how often do you see refrigerators, and TVs, and a mill shop? So it's really cold out, and um, before I start cutting, I'll actually open up the three doors and turn the fans on so it'll get cold right now. Warm. So we let those tubes out. It's always getting everybody excited. We're cutting here. Nada, nada. This is where sawyers tend to disagree. Our first cut to the second cut. You can flip it 90, or you can go and flip it 180, so you're working off this side. I think you get a better cut if you go ahead and flip it 180, so this is on the bed rail. So now it's real important after you flip it to make sure there's no sawdust or, or pieces of wood creating gaps here. Because now it's set down, we're gonna cut a level plane. So now we're gonna come up, we've got a mark here. come up we'll just push this baby off so right here's all our hydraulic control so I'm gonna get the clamps off there's our backstop now I can roll that log alright now we're gonna put, clamp it again now before we clamp it completely I want to raise that this end up get that fifth centered a little better. All right, we're gonna run our saw up and make sure we've got this thing square because just because it gets those dogs, that does not mean it's square. So run my square up here. See, that looks good. But it, it could be off where you raise that thing and you got a gap. We're just gonna make sure we're square. It could actually go this way just a little bit, but we can't work any of the hydraulics until the saw mill is back at its home base got a connection here, it won't allow us to do that. This LT35 wood miser has a simple set program. As I go through this log, I can set my thickness for each cut to whatever I like. Right here, we're at one inch. As I get through the log, I'll raise it up. And then once I bring it back, every time I hit that down button, it'll go down in increments of whatever I have that set. So right here, we push down, it goes down exactly one inch, gives us a one inch board. So basically we got this board here. We'll come back later 
and we'll saw cut our six inch wide piece. Almost our first usable piece of lumber. Now, as you can see, we're getting a nice can here to work with. All right, you can see where we're going with this. Let's go ahead and throw this thing on time lapse and shake and bake. Shake and bake, baby. cut list which is first says balusters cutting 36 inch balusters and I've got a jig set up so I'll square one end up slide down until I hit my stop cut the other end one's done cut all 56 and then we'll go on to cutting the, uh, the frame floor joist all right we didn't have enough to make that amount so we're going to bus code because it can creep there really is no code. We're going to have to put them five inches on center instead of four inches on center. All right, so now we're going to get to the floor joist and the rim joist. We're going to make a frame for the deck, and we'll nail that together or screw it together. I don't know you which yet. And that's another thing I'll go ahead and mention. Technically, the shear strength when you nail a nail in is stronger than a screw. I'll be a lot of stuff with screws. But as an engineer would speak, the shear strength shearing down a nail is stronger than a screw. All right, we've got our two band boards here. We'll go ahead and mark out our 16s on center for our floor joist. Easy peasy, right? Then it's squeeze. The old wood buzzers run dual purpose right now. Now I know this back ledger board will be able to fasten it with some either through bolts or big lag bolts. So that'll actually hold the back up. But as this deck sits on that horse barn frame, you know, it's gonna wanna tilt the weight, which this thing is surprisingly very light. You know, all the cedar is pretty light. So the interesting part is I've got this piece of galvanized, uh, it's a pole, it's got threads on the end. I'm gonna put this up at an angle, get a piece of angle We'll do through bolts here, galvanized, and then we'll have to drill a hole at an angle here. And this brace will go up like yay, and it'll fasten to the face of the building. So after just a few more templates, I'm gonna go to the other shop, get the water out, and start welding and fabbing up our pieces that we need to actually spin this thing. It's Saturday right now. It's, uh, it's starting to get to be a nice day. It's windy and cold, but hopefully we can get this thing put up today. No woodpeckers today! Metal fabricators, boys, come on! Well, change of plans. Imagine that, right? I didn't like how fabricating this off-site, I didn't like how my angles would be 
how the tension would be. So I'm actually gonna get this bottom plate like you're watching me do right now. And then the top one, I'll get it put in place on the side of the barn. And then I got a buddy, it's got a mobile welder. He'll come out and then we'll weld that pole. I don't know what you'd call it. A strap, a pole, or suspension rod. We'll actually weld it in place once the deck is set so I can get both angles correct. And I was just worried about coming off all wanky or the plate, the top plate that goes against the building being off. I think this will give us a better finished product. I got a little bit of prep work to do before I can actually set this in place. I'll set some temporary 2x4s or 2x6s up just to hold the front end up, fasten the ledger, and then tomorrow hopefully we can get the brackets welded on. We'll be done. This thing will be ready for, for a, probably a coat of Thompson's water seal this spring. I'm getting these bats cut off this board and bat in this white oak and I wanted to show you something. I put this up green. This is white oak and I put it up tight. Look at that. Almost two finger gap on white oak. And now you look down in the middle of this, this knot is spalled out, so I gotta take the planer and try to get that flush. <laughs> I showed you that one board earlier. I mean, white oak, it's a cool wood, but man, it does some crazy stuff when it wants to dry. Now, ideally, two people would be pretty handy for this next step, because I'm ready to take the loader Lift this thing up. I got a little ledger board up here that'll sit on. But from that skid loader, I'm not going to be able to see much of anything, especially left or right. So I think I'm going to have to get it up close and then probably get out with the ladder and maybe shimmy it back and forth. And then I can start putting my outside braces on and fasten it to the building. Hell, I don't know. This ain't on YouTube. How to build a suspension deck. I looked. What we'll have to do next is we'll have to plate this. We'll have that strap going down, welded, that galvanized, coming back up, which will be our support. Our cantilever support will come from this point right here is our strength, right here. <laughs> Trying to get this cup out. Use wide oak. Redo. I was my old buddy Nathan out to save him. My goodness. It's going uphill a little bit. Here's an Indian. Excuse me, Native American. I get in all kinds of trouble when I say Indian. All right. Last one's through. You can kind of get just what we're doing now. One more side to do, then we're ready to weld. Isn't that going to be so nice not to have any post out here? There's a couple notes on this project. The first one I'll say, I do think I snuck in a couple pine poles and those decking boards. we got a couple pine decking boards. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. So we'll have to readdress that at a lighter point. I do think the project looked good. Everything's off, the braces are off. It's actually completely done now. It's floating as it sits. Our main goal is accomplished, no posts. So we got this free open area that we can eventually build a door here without that, not have to worry about people hitting posts or whatnot. Let's go upstairs and look at it. So that's our finished product on the inside. I think she hung some hats up here to kind of hide that. She can decorate that however she wants, but this is actually what's our clamping system to support this thing. Now I do believe this deck itself, it's not heavy. It would almost support itself without these. Long term, it's not safe, obviously. So this is something, like I said, I looked on YouTube and I couldn't find really any videos on a suspension type deck. Maybe you call this more of a balcony because it's so small. I've called it a deck the whole video, but maybe we call it a balcony. I don't know. Had about a total of 26 hours in this project. From start to finish, this project went so smooth. It went so freaking smooth. And if you have any questions about maybe something I didn't show very good in the video, my email is in the description. Just shoot me an email and I'll try to answer what I can. This is something that the uh, first time I ever built one like this, I think it makes sense how it works. I'm not an engineer, so don't use my plans and, and say I watched an engineer do this. I'm just 
a hillbilly out here cutting on a sawmill and, and building stuff. And I'm having a good time. And if you like what you saw on today's episode at Karen Creek, don't hesitate to click right here to watch more. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for working with us. Karen Creek for the new balcony. Over and out.